In this video tutorial, I want to talk about the import PDB tool, uh, which you can find in the params menu and in the input and the import PDB tool. Uh, basically, a PDB is a protein data, ba a data bank file. You can find this in the uh, rcsb.org website. You can go to the rcsb.org website and uh, go to the search. Uh, menu uh, you can see that there are many categories here which you can choose the homo sapiens are humans uh, you can uh, choose between these categories and you can also choose from the synthetic construct menu so I have chosen several protein uh, files here so you can see one is uh, something like this a 6b3r you can uh, click on any of these uh, protein base files and when it opens you can also uh, watch them in 3D you have the 3D view section and you can also click on the title and in the download files you can uh, go and download the PDB format of this protein so you can see that you can also have the 3D view in the website and we don't want to get into the technical stuff we just want to know how grasshopper can visualize the PDB files so I have downloaded several files uh, from these uh, PDB website and now I'm going to show you how you can use the uh, PDB import PDB uh, tool to visualize your uh, protein in 3D and maybe use it uh, for uh, modeling something based on the concept of the protein uh, 3D model. So to get started, first uh, we download the file. I've just explained that for the PD PDB format or the PD format in GZ or the zip file and I have collected several files here you can also download any 3D uh, protein file you want and after that we have the PDB file we can go into the grasshopper canvas and into the inputs and use the import PDB tool so let me just use the bifocals to show you and here is the uh, file you need to open so I can go to the inputs and use the um, uh, primitive and in the file path we can define a file path for the imports uh, or the inputs so I'm going to give this to the file and right click on this and use the set one file and now I can choose between these PDB files so assume that we have to open this okay uh, you can see that uh, the import PDB will show you a cloud of points, the connections, and we can just make this uh, a better visualization. How we can do this is that the output is a bound, uh, the output is atoms, and the bounds. The bounds are the lines you can see here. So basically, you see the lines here. Uh, maybe we don't need these. So I'm just going to turn this off, preview off and uh, we go next to the input and use the atom data to extract the data into different outputs so now we have the points uh, so let me just show you here we have the points now and this is the cloud of points from the protein uh, we have the element name of the atom um, i'm not really familiar with this so uh, perhaps those who work in the protein uh, field uh, maybe know what these means. So element chain uh, is the chain of these protein atoms and the residue, the charge. Uh, basically all of these points have a zero charge so we can't use these numbers because we need a range of numbers now. <clears throat> the next one is the occupancy and that's one two so we can't play with this but the one I thought that maybe 
uh, will be interesting is the temperature factor of this atom. So uh, we have different temperatures for different points now. And so we have the atomic number, we have the serial number, and the residue number. So what about the temperature we can use is to show these points based on their temperatures uh, so we can color them. The more temperature it has goes to red and less temperature goes to green. So we can go to the display section and use the cloud display on the preview. Connect the points to the points. Turn this off. And you can see that there will be a cloud display of these points. You can change the size here. So I can give a number 2.5. Uh, you can also right click on this and choose the blurry blobs. It will show you a bigger one and now we just need to color them. So the color is important and if you download the remap tool uh, from my Grasshopper tutorials you can also uh, make this remap easily. So I'm going to use this remap uh, plus tool. Uh, basically the remap is easily made from the remap numbers so let me explain this here. The values is the temperature, the source domain and the target domain is which, uh, which is the source domain of these numbers or the temperatures. So basically we have a minimum temperature, we have the maximum temperature and the minimum will come here and the maximum will come here and this is the source domain of the numbers. So you can easily go to the uh, math to the domain and here we have a bounce and now we can connect the bounds to this value and it says it's between 88 to 184 so we can say this is the source and now the target is important what do we want to uh, scale these numbers to so the default is 0 to 1 and that's great because the color is 0 to 1 in the gradient uh, grasshopper tutorial I'll explain that that if you use a gradient uh, lower limit is 0, upper limit is 1, so basically this is a 0 and this is a 1 and you can choose between a 0 and 1 in the parameter. So if you give an, um, maybe 0 0.5 you can get in the middle, 0 0.2, 0 0.7 and when we remap this to 0 uh, between 0 and 1 it perfectly fits in the range of the gradient. So I'm going to give this to the parameter. I'm going to change the color to the preset uh, from green to uh, red. And now we can give this to the color. So this is the most easiest way. You can visualize the PDBs and the protein and data bank files. And you can see that we can uh, see that these um, uh, atoms have more temperature and these don't have or less temperature. So you can change the file. Let's set it to another one. And you can zoom extend to find it. Okay. This is perhaps a small file I downloaded here. A 5SG, fibrils of the superhelical repeated peptide. I don't know what this means, but perhaps it's a simple uh, protein here. So I can change this to maybe 5SG, that's the 5SG one, 5XPN, and so you can see that we can import any uh, protein uh, file here. So you can see we have a beautiful symmetry here, and we can also use uh, maybe, maybe something like a sphere here, but uh, the dot display is a better one because you can give uh, the point to a sphere and we have a lot of spheres here and then give the color to the spheres so maybe we can use a preview custom preview and give colors to this uh, but the dot display is a better one because it's fast you can also uh, see what the 3D model is really is. So remember that you can always use that uh, uh, cloud display and the blurry blobs to uh, use this technique to see uh, what the points are. Okay, I gave wrong to the size. Now I'm going to disconnect this. 
and give this to the color. Okay, so we can visualize that in another techniques or another methods, but it will be really, really hard because these are lots of points. They are about uh, 1,000, excuse me, 1, 11,000. So there are many, many points, but you can use something like this. Assume that you want to delete these points because they are near together. You can use the call uh, duplicates points and we need a tolerance here so I'm going to give it a big number maybe 5.5 .5. so you can see that we can delete those points based uh, of the tolerance so we can go from 11,000 to maybe 1,000 and when we have these points we can visualize them uh, with the uh, metaball tool I've explained about the metaball but we had the meta ball costume you can check out the meta ball costume tutorial to understand what I saying here you can give these points to the charge so I'm not going to play with the charge here so I'm going to give all of these points uh, a constant charge so let's assume that we have a charge maybe 0 0.8 but you can't you can't give this to the charge because you have uh, 600 points and you need 600 shards here. So I'm going to repeat this, uh, repeat data. And now I'm going to go to the sets, to the list length and count the numbers of the points. So if you connect the list length to an output, you can count the numbers. It's, uh, it's 670 and now I'm going to give this to the repeat data. And now we have 670 data here that's basically a 0 0.8 repeated 670 times so now we can give this to the charge and uh, you have to uh, use a plane here to um, visualize the metal ball so i'm going to give a surface I'm going to the bounding box let's connect this to the bounding box right click on the bounding box and use the union box we have a union box here then we can just go and uh, explode this, the construct brep, okay, and just use an edge here. I'm going to use an edge of this box and use perpendicular frames to uh, have sections of the metal ball. So I'm now going to use a list item onto the edge, maybe number seven. I don't know the number, so I'm going to change this until I give a height here. Okay, now we can use the perpendicular frames. I also made a tutorial about the perpendicular frames. You can watch that and maybe give it a 50. Uh, but remember, because this is at the top, we can scale this line a little bit, but, uh, a little bit, but that's not a problem. Let's just give this to the plane and see what happens so uh, it will make uh, it will take a little time to calculate the metal balls yeah, let's just turn this off turn the okay what happened here okay uh, I'm going to turn this off turn the points off and again connect this to the plane okay after a while you can see that it took about seven seconds you can find this at the display section and the canvas widget and at the profiler you can see how much time the tool used to calculate the geometry so we can uh, see an iso curve uh, of these protein uh, you can increase the number of the sections uh, you can also extrude them but uh, I'm not going to explain that because it will take many and it will take a long time to calculate that but you can see that I have uh, made a 3d model of a protein I've just extruded those uh, polylines and you can see that the model comes out but it will really take time because you have to uh, okay let's see this in the rendered section you can see the model maybe we can just use half of this uh, in our uh, design and say that we have used the proteins to 
maybe uh, the concept of the protein to design our uh, 3D model. So you can also use this. I will put the file for you. You can uh, open that. Okay, let me show you. Uh, we can have the um, here the ISO curve of the metal ball. Then we can smooth that, make the boundary, and then extrude that. But uh, be aware if you just turn, turn this on or uh, middle click and just turn this on, uh, it will maybe take uh, 13 to 15 minutes to calculate that. So that is basically that's because the metal ball give, will give you a polyline and you have to smooth that. So uh, that's, uh, that's the PDB tutorial uh, and how you can use the grasshopper tool to visualize it. Uh, just like this technique we use, the cloud display, and this is the most easiest way you can use to see different proteins and get inspired by them or whatever you want to do with that protein. But uh, this is how you can use the import PDB tool and show the atoms, uh, color them. You can also use maybe something like the, I don't know, uh, the charge here, but we don't have any charge here. So if I give this to the remap tool, you can see that they are all similar in charge. So let me just give this a number here. Uh, or the residue, you can see that they are all the same and that is not a number, maybe. And maybe the occupancy, they are all the same. And the temperature is always different, so we can use that as a visualization number, visualization tool to show uh, the cloud display. You can uh, make those uh, blurry clouds bigger, but remember they will blur out. You can see that it's a concept. You can make those bigger or smaller and see the results. Okay, thank you for watching. If you have any questions about the grasshopper commands, uh, or you want to know more about a grasshopper command, feel free to ask and I will record that uh, and uh, show you in another video and thank you.